The story begins when the girl was to become a bride on May 5th, the perfect wedding of the happy couple. Everything was as it should be, and the girl fumed that her partner thought the same. But eventually he said, Chelsea, I have to admit that he doesn't love her. The girl was very upset. The seventh prince of the Hevram Empire, her fiancé, Carmen Noah Daylark, she never even thought he would leave her. But in reality, it all happened much earlier. When the girl was just a baby, Chelsea Lording, the sixth daughter of a noble family, Chelsea was sitting at a small table and dealing with flowers. But suddenly, a woman came up to her and asked if she was done. The girl was very frightened and broke a flower. The woman got angry and asked what that one thing was doing. Let her admire it. She's ruined the vase of flowers again. How much longer can one do that? At that moment, Chelsea wondered if she should tell the truth. Then the girl turned to the woman and said she was thinking, remembering the twelve formulas of invocation. But the woman didn't know what she was talking about. Then Chelsea said that, simply put, it was that dog over there who was just coming toward her. He's distracting her. Chelsea said she called for it, but she didn't even know how to control it, so she asked her aunt. Maybe she knows. Aunt Chelsea has a son who is eight years older than she is. Her husband, that is, Chelsea's uncle, was a talented alchemist. He hoped his son would inherit his business, but unfortunately the boy was not interested at all. So the aunt worries that her son will not be able to inherit his father's business. That's why she's always dissatisfied. The woman then took the vase and asked why she should touch the flowers if she was always distracted. The woman said that Chelsea can't concentrate on anything properly. She wants her to grow up and get married as soon as possible. The aunt yelled at the girl and said she was tired of putting up with her endless antics. And this is what Chelsea hears almost every day, as she wondered what she should do. But at that moment, her uncle's words came to her mind. Trudy. He said that the world is very much like clockwork. Each piece symbolizes a different person, and each has a role to play. The bottom line is that they all ensure the movement of the hour hands. Then her uncle asked her, What would she like to be when she grows up? What role does she want to play in the world? That's when Chelsea decided her role was to get married and keep the homestead safe. She had come to this conclusion from the fairy tales her mother had read to her, like the girl ate the poisoned apple and the prince woke her up with his kiss or how a girl lost the slipper that brought her prince to her, and also how a girl found her prince by being turned into a toad. That's when Chelsea realized she needed a prince. Her aunt didn't understand her thoughts, and she wondered when she would meet her prince. Well, as she got a little older, her thoughts changed. One day she and her mom came to the mansion, and Chelsea said she didn't want to get married. Then she asked if she thought she could love. There's no such thing as love at her age. Her mom said it's not like she's forcing her to get married right now. She just wants Chelsea to at least be friends with him. Of course, it would be nice if they got married later, but they don't have to right now. I had a forced engagement to some boy. True love was out of the question. But at that moment, a boy came up to them and told her to let him introduce himself to her. After that, the boy said that he was very happy to see them. When she saw him, it was a direct hit to the heart. The long-awaited prince. Chelsea ran up to him and called him Prince. The guy was surprised and said he was, but how did she know he was a prince? The girl said that he was so beautiful, his eye color was like the blue sea, and his hair was like the summer sun. The boy stood there and just thanked her for her compliments. But then suddenly, the girl shouted for him to marry her. The boy automatically said, thank you, but then eventually realized what she was saying and asked her what she meant. Chelsea immediately got excited and ran to her mom and yelled that she had decided to marry Carmen. The boy ran after her and told her to stop. After that, the kids ran up to their moms. Chelsea's mom was very surprised to hear that she had decided to get married. She had said she didn't want to, but the daughter replied that it just happened that Carmen was her prince. The boy stood there in shock. He couldn't even answer. The boy's mom said it must be fate and asked, So are they getting married? Everyone there started congratulating them that day, and Chelsea was very happy that she didn't even wonder if he liked her. A few days later, as they sat at breakfast, her mom asked Chelsea if she wanted to hang out with other kids her age. The girl thought for a moment and then asked, Will Carmen be there? Her mom replied that of course, and Chelsea said in that case she was going. After that, she went to the mansion where the meeting was being held. Chelsea went there to see Carmen, but he wasn't there, so she thought he must be late. The daughter of a family of hereditary wizards, Helena Brown, 
came up to her and told her that her family had had many great wizards for generations, then asked her if she thought she could be one when she grew up. But the son of an earl and a big banker, Chris Glam, intervened. He said that she couldn't use magic yet because her mana was too low. But the girls in the bank were a different matter, at least their family, for example. Elena said that the bank's money was not theirs. The boy was surprised and asked why that was, because they kept it with them. So it was theirs. But at that moment, a boy came up to Chelsea and suggested they go play nights. The girl just sat there all this time thinking about how much she missed Carmen. She wasn't interested in being around all those kids. But then suddenly it was him, Carmen, who walked into the room. He apologized for being late and said it was nice to meet everyone. Chelsea, when she saw him, thought her wish had finally come true and he had come. She immediately ran up to meet him, but the boy knocked her down and ran straight to the seventh prince. So the girl fell to the floor. The children rounded on Carmen and began to ask if he was really a prince and what he was doing. But the boy laughed and told them to just call him Carmen. Chelsea, who was still sitting on the floor, thought he was a fool. She'd said hello first, and he hadn't even looked in her direction, standing there talking to them. He didn't even come when she fell to help. Chelsea thought it was a severe humiliation for her. But at that moment, someone came up to her and asked if she was all right. When the girl looked up, she saw Carmen standing in front of her. He asked her how she was doing. Chelsea was surprised. But she said hello to him in a happy voice and thought she should take all her charges back because he was definitely the only prince. After a while, the future Duchess Brown returned home, and Minnie Graf Glam fell asleep on the couch, so Chelsea was left alone with Carmen. The girl leaned against his shoulder, then he asked if she wanted to go to bed. Chelsea said she was so exhausted she thought he wouldn't come. As expected, Carmen is quite mature and cool, unlike the other kids, according to Chelsea. Then she suddenly turned to him and said that she wanted to ask him, they say she was the same age as him. Carmen was surprised, but after thinking the question over, he said that it was probably Chelsea. When I saw the look on his face, I thought he probably didn't even know. Chelsea laughed, took his hand, and said they were even the same age. I guess it really was fate. But then suddenly, Carmen said that she was even shorter than Carol. The girl was very surprised. So the remark then, she asked what he meant. Carmen said that indeed she had forgotten. They had met at the palace, and he had personally introduced them. Chelsea replied that of course she remembered. And she asked if he meant his little sister, who was two years younger than she was. The boy replied that yes. She also stroked her head, saying, What a little girl. Chelsea got angry and asked if that meant she was a child in his eyes like Carol. The boy looked a little embarrassed. When he wanted to justify himself, the girl interrupted him and said she was taller than Carol, if he wanted to know, and older. Maybe he doubted her words. Chelsea, when she saw him laughing, told him not to do it. He just hurt her pride. The last time she'd been taller than Carol was a full two centimeters. Chelsea continued to be indignant. She said her sister and brothers were tall, so she would be too. But Carmen kept laughing. Then Chelsea said he would see more. During her time at the academy, she would be the tallest of them all. Afterward, he stroked her head and said, Okay, let her just not get upset. When she got home, she immediately laid down on her bed and thought that what Carmen thought of her, as well as her sister, was a big problem. She wondered if this was all about his little sister. Come to think of it, her older brother treats her a lot like her, and she'd been engaged to Carmen for over a year. Chelsea thought this couldn't go on any longer, and she needed to come up with a plan to win Carmen's heart as soon as possible. So she took a notebook and pen from her nightstand and thought she should start with something he liked. Carmen loves animals. When Chelsea brought him a puppy, he was absolutely thrilled, but she's less and less invited to visit him. She would like to see him more often. Then suddenly she looked at her drawings and thought for a while. And then she had a plan. Her sister's a hunter. If Chelsea latches onto her, it's bound to work out. Then the girl would run out the door, running into her sister's room, asking her to take her hunting tomorrow. The next day they did go hunting together. Chelsea's sister got hit by a hawk. The girl herself was pleased and asked if she could bring it. The sister replied that she could, but that it was very dangerous in that place so she should not go far away. The girl immediately ran to the body that had been pierced by the arrow and thought that Carmen would be happy. He loves animals after all, 
She even imagined his reaction when she brought in the hawk. Chelsea thought he'd say it was really cool and ask her to marry him. She of course wanted to get married when she got older, but things can change, so it's no big deal. As she prepared her equipment, namely the pouch, she thought it was a good thing she had prepared the summoner's chains and the magic circle. She had spent all her pocket money for the prince. Rounding in a circle, she didn't realize where the hawk was. It had actually fallen somewhere nearby. She passed under a large tree and saw him. As she wrapped him in chains, she realized that he was apparently dying. She didn't have much time, so Chelsea had to act fast. She spread various papers with spells on the ground nearby and began her ritual. She placed her hands on one of the papers and said, Magic Seal Formula One, it would belong to her. At that moment, the hawk began to dodge and fly upward. Chelsea wasn't skilled yet, but she could tame the hawk. In a nutshell, she simply makes a contract with the subject. The stronger her spirit, the larger the beast she can tame. As the hawk began to dodge, she wondered if he wanted to get the upper hand on her. But he wouldn't succeed. No matter how hard he tries, Chelsea has trained hard for this, so all his attempts to break free are completely futile. When the hawk began to glow brightly, Chelsea said Formula 13. She would give him a part of her magic, and he would lend her his in return. When the hawk finally obeyed her, Chelsea fell exhausted to the ground. She didn't have the strength to move a finger. Well, that's when her sister came running up to the girl. She was very surprised to see her. Her sister ran up close to her and told her that there she was. She was so worried that the girl had already disappeared somewhere and asked what had happened to her. Was she hurt by any chance? Chelsea told her sister that everything was fine. She was lying down because she was exhausted. Her sister in turn replied that it was okay to go home now. She would get some rest. Everyone was tired anyway. At that moment her sister bent down to pick up the hole, but it immediately flew upward. The girl was very surprised and asked if he had survived. Chelsea turned around and said that he was hers now and thanked her sister. A few days later, Carmen and his mother were sitting in the palace garden, but then suddenly their perfect tranquility was broken by someone's voice. Of course it was Chelsea. She screamed Carmen's name, and when she ran up to him, she jumped right into his arms. The girl replied that they hadn't seen him in a long time and she missed him. Carmen just said hello to her. Then suddenly Carmen's mother stood up and told Chelsea that she could see that the girl was full of energy. Learned in turn, said hello to the Empress. The woman said that apparently yours has something to talk about too, so she's going for a walk. When the Empress left, Chelsea told Carmen that she wanted to show him something. She started going through her pockets, then she took out a chain and said that he would like it, let him see it, and at that moment she waved her hand, and the very same hawk appeared over their heads. Carmen was shocked at what was happening. When the hawk perched on the girl's arm, he asked if she was a summoner. Chelsea said yes, and offered to touch it. Carmen became embarrassed and asked if he could. The girl said yes, and at that moment the hawk jumped onto the boy's arm. Now I thought to myself, now he will definitely be her prince. Just as Chelsea had thought, Carmen really liked her gift. She didn't know if he'd take a new look at her afterward. As it started to get dark, Chelsea said she should be getting back by now. Carmen agreed and said it was late enough. The girl looked at him and thought that his hair was perfect and the sunlight shimmered in it so beautifully, and in general he was very handsome. At that moment Carmen said, Great. The girl who was interrupted from her thoughts asked him what he said. The boy replied that he thought Chelsea was an amazing girl. Liked the compliment, but she even got a little embarrassed. Then Carmen said he liked her very much and thanked her for today. A short while later, Chelsea walked back to the wagon and got in it to leave for home. She thought he'd called her amazing, and next time she should tell him that too. A month later, the day of the founding of the Empire finally arrived. It's a celebration that Chelsea has been looking forward to for a very long time, and also a great opportunity to spend the day with Carmen. But when she came to go with him, his guard said it was impossible. He couldn't let the prince get wet in the rain because his highness might get sick. Carmen said that maybe he would let her go out for a little while, since the rain was almost over. Chelsea spoke up and said that it was a holiday and she was looking forward to it, but he was adamant and told them to stop this circus and to celebrate everything in the garden. Chelsea was very upset about it, but she had no choice, so the children went into the garden. Carmen held her hand as they got off. He told her to look. There were so many pink Mongolias blooming in the garden and asked her if she ever drank tea from them. 
But the girl ignored his question. Carmen then said his mom really likes this tea and she says the drink is a great stress reliever. But Chelsea wasn't interested in the conversation. She nodded indifferently at his phrases. Then he looked at her and asked if maybe she was tired and should continue next time. He would order appetizers to be prepared. In fact, Chelsea didn't like all of this at all. She was upset because on this day, he was supposed to be hers alone. <sighs> Actually, Chelsea only gets to see Carmen a couple times a month. This month, it's Empire Foundation Day, and she was so excited to make it memorable for the two of them. And Carmen is a prince, so he's always busy doing something. And this time the girl wanted to take him out to a festival and have some fun. Chelsea was so prepared to make this a great date. They would watch the parade together, eat street food, and snatch a kiss under the fireworks. But instead of all that, they sit in the garden of the Imperial Palace and do nothing. Chelsea wondered if she was the only one who regretted it, because Carmen himself was quick to accept the news. But then suddenly he looked at his friend and asked what was the matter with her. She was silent. Doesn't she like to look at flowers? No answer. He suggested that maybe they could at least have tea. Chelsea said in a satisfied voice that that wasn't why she'd come to drink tea. Carmen then suggested that maybe they could take a walk. Chelsea was not happy here. She asked, Would that be a walk? Walking should be in spacious places like the streets decorated for the festival. Carmen remained silent. He didn't know what to do. He thought she must be angry. After thinking for a bit, he put his hands on her shoulders and said that she had said she wanted to go to the Dragon Tower after all and suggested she go there together. Chelsea was surprised and wondered if he was really suggesting that. But then suddenly he told her to be quiet and looked at his guard. Carmen then asked, she doesn't want to be stopped, does she? The girl replied with shining eyes that of course she didn't. The Dragon Tower is the home of the dragon that was the origin of the founding of the Hevram Empire. It is said that the Empire was founded by the one who found that dragon. This man was given the title of the first emperor. It was also the birthplace of magic, ancient and powerful, sorcery that not everyone can do. The first sorcerers were so powerful that they could destroy the empire. This is why the Hevram Empire is considered the most powerful in history, and is also considered the birthplace of magic. Many of course consider it just rumors, like children's fairy tales, but some say that ten years ago, a very real dragon was actually found in the tower. His death was a blow to the empire. Some even lost their magic. That's why Chelsea really wants to see the place where such a great creature dwelt. She recently asked Carmen to show it to her, but then he replied that only members of the Imperial family were allowed in. Chelsea was outraged, because even his sister was allowed in, but her request was simply ignored. She learned to be glad because now he was offering to show her the tower after all. But at that moment, Carmen stopped, and the girl accidentally bumped into his back. He immediately turned around and asked if she was okay. Chelsea asked why he'd stopped suddenly, but at that moment she looked straight in front of her and saw this majestic tower. She was amazed and wondered if that was really it. The literature only said the tower was blue. Chelsea couldn't believe that it was so much more beautiful in person than it was in the stories. At this point the girl motioned for Carmen to come inside, but the boy turned aside and said now let her wait a little while. He then added that the door was usually closed at that time. Carmen thought maybe the soldiers had gone somewhere else. Then the girl took him by the hand and led him toward the passage anyway. He had no choice but to agree. So he said that it was all right to go in. Chelsea wondered if the tower was so magnificent even from the outside what awaited them inside. She wondered if there were dragon tracks. But when they went deeper, she was very surprised. Chelsea asked Carmen what kind of stone door it was. It was unlikely they would be able to open it, but the boy laughed and told her to wait. Then he made some gestures with his hands and the door opened. Then Chelsea said in a surprised voice, So that means it's a secret door. When they went deeper, she told Carmen that since only members of the Imperial family could enter this place, she could be punished if she went any further. Chelsea wondered what if she was ordered to be executed for that, but Carmen said it was okay. There was no one inside. Chelsea calmed down and asked, She's still going to be his family when they get married, right? And Carmen said sure. And then he added that they should go soon. As they climbed up, the torches lit themselves. Chelsea loved it. She wondered if the place must be sealed with magic or if the dragon had done it. 
The climb was longer than the girl had expected. They had been walking for about twenty minutes, and she was already tired. But then suddenly Carmen turned to her and asked if she wanted to rest. Now, Chelsea thought, of course her legs were already falling off. When they sat down on the bench, she said that climbing to the top was not an easy task. Carmen asked if she was tired, and added if she wanted to come back. Chelsea was very surprised and asked what he was saying. Carmen said there's not much else to see, it's all the same. And there's a bed in this place. By the way, she can lie down and rest for a while if she wants. Chelsea had no choice, and she said it was better for them to go back after all. As they made their way down, she thought to herself, she hadn't expected this from the Dragon Tower at all. The whole thing was just a simulation of some kind of stair climbing. But when they got downstairs, Chelsea was very surprised. Because when they went inside, the door was open, but now it was closed. Carmen was surprised and asked her why it was closed. When he tried to open it, he got nervous because he couldn't get it open. He asked what they should do if the door was locked from the outside. Chelsea started pounding on it with her fists, but it still wouldn't open. The boy said the soldiers must have come back as they climbed the stairs. There are days when the doors open all day long, so he had no idea it would be closed. He missed his head and apologized, said it was his fault, but Chelsea said not at all, because she had asked him to show him the tower. After all, most of the blame was on her. She said that the knight from the garden would probably be looking for them. Even if they aren't found that day, the soldiers are making their rounds here, so they will surely find them and let them out and said that until then they would have to sit in that place. He felt very sorry for the girl. She was surprised that he was so desperate. She thought the prince and lady might have disappeared outside in an instant. Surely they must have made a fuss to find them by now. If they were in this place, they would be found sooner or later. So you don't have to worry too much. We could just sit and think about it for a while. Chelsea thought she was in the castle with Carmen, and no one else was there. When he tried to open the door once more, Chelsea walked over to him, took his hand, and suggested they go up to the top floor. Another hellish climb awaited them. As they walked up the stairs, he held her hand and asked how she was doing. Chelsea replied that they were almost there, still a little ways to go. After a while they did come. The girl was very glad that she had seen the dragon's lair, especially because she had seen it with her own eyes. She looked around and thought everything was so beautiful in this place. But then, all of a sudden, she fell. Chelsea said her legs just stopped holding her. She couldn't feel them. Carmen held out his hand to her and said that this place does have a lot of stairs. He realizes it's really hard. Chelsea took his hand and said it was true. She didn't think she'd ever make such a long climb again. Then he asked if she wanted to see the beautiful view. The girl stood up and said that of course she did. Carmen laughed and told her not to expect much, because the place was pretty empty. After that, they approached the painting. When she looked at it, she immediately did not recognize it. Carmen, seeing the puzzled face, said that it was Kira, the dragon's name. Chelsea took her hand away from the painting and said it was the first time she'd heard of him. The boy explained that it was all because it had been kept private. The most recent members of the species are the blue dragon that became the symbol of the imperial family. The only dragon of the Hevram Empire, Kira. Chelsea didn't really think he'd have a name like that, but she figured if he did have one, he should be called by it. But at that moment, Carmen came to the stairs and asked her if she was coming. The girl immediately ran up to him. After that, they stepped into the secret passage. Chelsea, who could barely keep up with him, was surprised and thought that there must be something there too. But after that, they went out onto a small veranda. When the girl looked down, she realized that the whole capital was visible from that place. She said there were so many people on the streets and they were all so happy. Carmen agreed with her. At this point, the girl got upset. She sat down on the floor and said that if it wasn't for the weather, they would have walked there right now too. But they ended up stuck in that tower. At that point, he apologized to her, but Chelsea didn't understand why. She said they would definitely go to the festival next year. He replied okay, and then pointed down and told her to look down there. Carmen was pointing at Wesley's magic store. You can see it perfectly from the tower. Now I said he looks so small like he's a toy boy. I agreed with her and said that from the tower he looked small after all. But at that moment, they looked over and saw that the lights had suddenly gone out. Chelsea suggested that maybe it had just shut off. 
The girl then added that she had recently heard that Uncle Wesley had been adored. Elena had told her that he had brought the wrong item that he had ordered, and she had just bought a magic amplifier from him at the time, so she had to exchange it for another one. Carmen said that, well, after all, he was getting old, so he was wrong. Chelsea replied that if she ever made a mistake like that, she would give him her barrette. Well, that suddenly thought Carmen was a man, after all, and he wasn't interested in hairpins at all, when she immediately said she'd rather give him a ring. The boy asked if she thought it would suit him, that he told himself the beads would definitely fit. At that moment, Carmen took off his jacket and threw it over the girl's shoulders. She wasn't expecting it, but she didn't give any sign of it, and asked if the bead was to be worn only by the bride. Carmen laughed and asked if he could remain the groom. After that, the kids laughed out loud. But then they looked down and Chelsea told him to look there were towers too. Carmen replied that it was the clock tower in the square. The girl was surprised and asked, Isn't it the same as this tower? Carmen said, Does she really think it is the same as the clock tower in the square? Chelsea wondered if even trespassers like them were sitting and being watched by the festival from above. But Carmen ignored her questions and asked if she was cold. The girl proudly replied that she was not, for her caring fiancé had given her the jacket. How could she be cold after that? When it was already dark, the fireworks started. They sat on the box and Carmen suddenly put his arms around her. Chelsea was surprised and asked, Does he really want to warm her up that badly? But the guy replied that no, he just wanted to hold her. Chelsea was very surprised that Carmen wanted to hug her himself. Her uncle had once told her that everyone had a role to play in life. She thinks she was born to be near her Prince Charming. As they looked at each other, Chelsea asked if the fireworks weren't beautiful. Carmen replied that yes, when she said that she really liked it. Eventually they were able to go home that afternoon, lying on their bed. Chelsea thought she really missed Carmen. She looked out the window, wondering if he was asleep already. It appeared to the girl that she had been in the Dragon Tower for ten hours at least. She even thought they'd have to spend the night there but they ended up coming out after six hours of confinement. Her parents were very worried all this time. As it turned out, during the Empire's Foundation Day celebration, someone from the Lord's side did catch a cold and died from the illness. Carmen's mom hugged her son. He said it was okay. They were just looking at the Night City. Chelsea then thought she and him would grow closer after this day, but in the end she's just a spoiled brat who wants too much. The girl hoped that at least she wouldn't be punished. But as it was, she was locked up for three whole weeks, a most unpleasant and hurtful punishment for her. It's sitting in her room all day, it's hell for her. So she sometimes went to the kitchen at night, hoping for something tasty to eat. But then suddenly, on her way to the kitchen, she passed through her parents' room and heard them talking. Chelsea was surprised that they were still awake. The girl could vaguely hear them talking in clipped phrases, so she decided to move closer to see who they were talking about. Chelsea thought, are they really telling Carmina? As she walked to the door, she heard her father say he had a fever and his condition was serious. Her mother asked, what is it that makes him sick? The man said it's a lizard disease. They say you can get it from poisonous lizards or from animals that eat their discarded tails. But he didn't understand where the prince had contracted it after all. The woman said there must be a way to extract this disease. Maybe the medicinal plant Baraka would work. The man said it wasn't easy to get. The knights had searched around, but they couldn't find anything like it. His wife offered to join the search tomorrow. Chelsea didn't know what they were talking about. Was Carmen really that sick? Too sick to get medicine? She thought her lover must be in danger. The girl thought it was just a plant, so she might as well try looking for it. She firmly decided that she was going to look for it to cure Carmen. Chelsea then began researching many different books and papers that had the name of the plant in them. Baraka has a pungent odor in purple petals. It's a northern plant. That's why it grows mostly in winter in the Hebram Empire. Chelsea is sure that if you look all over the empire, you can find at least one. After some more reading, she finally came up with a plan. She thought it would be a good idea to summon an animal that had that charm. Chelsea thought Doggy would be perfect, but she didn't know if one dog would do any good with her current level of magical power. She wouldn't be able to summon more. Chelsea didn't know what to do. But then suddenly she thought she could summon insects, and using her magic, she cast a spell and asked them to lend her their power. And at that moment, many different little insects appeared on her floor. 
Chelsea thought that she had done it. The girl leaned over to them and said that they needed to find a purple flower with a pungent odor. If they found one, let them tell her right away. As they began to fly away, she told them to search until they lost their pulse because her sweet Carmen's life was at stake. Chelsea is a little nervous because the insects are very small, but she's glad the appeal worked. However, she had no strength left at all, and that was bad. With these thoughts, she fell to the floor and fell asleep. After a while, the insects began to return. When she let them in, she asked, Have they already found Baraka? Let them answer soon. The girl started to talk to them. But then suddenly a maid came in and asked her if she was awake yet. When she saw Chelsea talking to the window, she asked, What is she doing? Chelsea replied that it was no big deal and asked, Where are Mommy and Daddy? Her maid replied that they were in the garden right now, but would be away on business soon. Chelsea at this point immediately ran for the exit. The maid yelled for her to be careful because if she ran like that, she would fall. As she entered her room, she wondered where this girl was in such a hurry. Then she shouted back, wondering what the mess was, why she had scattered all those sheets. Chelsea mentally apologized to her and thought she would explain everything later. Right now, she needed to meet her parents soon. Running past the window, she saw them. Chelsea was glad they hadn't left, but she needed to catch up with them before it was too late. She decided to tell them where Baraka could be found. She'd have to tell them about the insects, too. The problem was that her parents didn't recognize mages, which was why she liked spending time with her uncle. But nothing is more important right now than saving Carmen, so she's willing to do anything. When she ran outside, her parents were about to get on the wagon. She shouted for them to wait. Her father was surprised and asked, Did she really come to see them off? The girl stopped. She was very tired while she was running, because she was hurrying as fast as she could. She said with a shortness of breath that she wanted to tell them something. Her mom asked why she was the one running around the estate. Her father said to let her catch her breath for a while and then let her talk. Chelsea wondered where she should start, then blurted out that she knew where Baraka's plant was. The parents immediately gathered several wagons and went to look for him. The coachmen who were driving the wagon were talking to each other. One of them didn't understand what was the point of it all. He asked, couldn't he go alone and check it out? There's no way the plant could be on that mountain. They've searched the whole capital. It's nowhere to be found. And here some little girl found it right away. His partner said she's a kid, so she's just getting attention that way. His partner said, there. He meant it too. So might as well go back better Chelsea, who was watching them. Thought she wasn't lying, was she? Chelsea's mom and empress went together to get the plant. Her parents passed on information about where Baraka might be. So the girl had to sweat to convince everyone. Just saying it grew behind the big rocks on the mountain wasn't enough. Chelsea asked her mother, Why are these knights so distrustful? Finding the plant for Carmen is an important mission. Her mom said they were just tired of searching endlessly. She said Chelsea grumbles when she's tired too. Chelsea said they all had two disgruntled faces, all the time saying they wanted to turn back. But her mom said they were going where she was asking them to go. So let them calm down. But at that moment, a bug flew up to her and started saying something to the girl. Her mother immediately asked what the moth was saying to her. After listening carefully to the moth, Chelsea looked out the window and told the men they were going the other way. Chelsea can't stay calm in the face of their criticism. After all, it's about curing Carmen of his illness, and she really wants to help. The girl says the flower is behind the rocks. After a while, they did arrive. One of the knights looked, pulling apart the bushes, but said there was nothing there. Chelsea was very surprised. She said it couldn't be, because it was growing right there. She pulled one of the men aside and said that maybe they were blind because the purple flower was right behind the rock. But when she looked, she didn't see him. Chelsea didn't understand how that could be. There should be a Baraka plant behind the rock. The girl said it was definitely here, a plant with purple flowers. At that moment, one of the guards turned to her and asked, She speaks of purple. Perhaps she meant this? He showed her a wilted flower and said that behind the stone was just this. A common weed. Chelsea asked him in surprise. Isn't that Baraka? Then she dropped to the ground and started saying that she must be here. Baraka is definitely around here somewhere. If they look at everything carefully, they will definitely find it. 
a man came up to her and said that he thought people were misrepresenting themselves to the right plant. If you look closely, it does look like Baraka from afar. He understands the lady's feeling, but still there are no other flowers nearby. He suggested we go back. Chelsea was very upset but said okay. The man yelled to turn around and take the ladies home. Chelsea was very upset that she didn't find the flower despite her mistake. Her mom didn't scold the girl. On the contrary, she tried to comfort me and kept saying it was okay. It's not a big deal. Everyone makes mistakes. But somewhere deep down, Chelsea felt Mama's guilt towards the Empress. Even the knights who were excited about the possibility of finding Baraka had gone quiet. And this silence only made the situation more intense. And yet we ourselves were bitter at Chelsea's own words of apology from the Empress herself. The Empress also said that she understood everything. That the person wanted to help them. But let her leave it up to the adults. Carmen will definitely get better. She promises her that. The Empress was not offended by the girl in the slightest because she is a child, a clueless child who doesn't know how to make adult decisions. Toward evening, they were already back home. Chelsea was lying on her bed. She was very upset because she didn't understand. It all seemed too strange to her. Her bugs definitely found Baraka. Insects can't confuse plants. The vision of moths and ants is different from that of humans, but they have an excellent charm. They had to look for Baraka by scent, they by appearance, and she's pretty sure Baraka and weed's smells are completely different. Besides, Baraka's smell is too peculiar, but in the end it turned out not to be it. The girl thought it was all a hell of a thing. She looked at the drawing and thought, and yet her beloved Carmen is suffering so much. It's been over a week since they said he was sick, and three days since they went to look for Baraka. When there was a poisoning, she cried because of the terrible pain in her stomach. All the time she imagines that Carmen is now enduring the same pain, she feels even worse. And she can't even see him. Chelsea really wanted to be able to take away his pain at will, but she tried to calm down and stop her tears. Chelsea figured that Carmen wouldn't get better from her tears, so she should pull herself together and find Baraka herself. Even though the Empress had told her to leave it up to the adults, and she had screwed up big time last time, this time, Chelsea's magic stone to find a plant she just recently bought. Even with the stone, she needed a lot of magical power for the formula. So for a while she even suffered from magical exhaustion. But this time the girl was determined to find Baraka. That was her goal. After three days she began to feel better already. Moths flew in, and when she launched them into the room, they told her that they had found Baraka on the outskirts of the capital. Chelsea's response was to go there immediately. Chelsea constructed a millage sleeping her out of pillows and rappelled down the rope. Of course, it's very dangerous to go there alone, but Chelsea can't share her ideas with her parents anymore, so she has to find the plant on her own. Descending the rope, the girl thought that this time she would definitely find Baraka and save her lover. After a while, she came to the place the moths had told her. When she looked, she saw Baraka in the rock. It was on the outskirts of the capital, but luckily, Chelsea was able to catch a hitchhiking van to get there. The man who gave her a ride said goodbye and headed toward the neighboring village. Looking at the flower, Chelsea thought that now all she had to do was get up there somehow. At that moment she thought, why didn't she come with her parents? And would she really have to ask anyone else for help? If there were any adults around, she could easily get Baraka. At that moment, Chelsea heard someone's male voices. One of them said that he had found the girl, and immediately she hid behind a tree. The men continued to talk to each other. One of them said that at last they had found another one. The other laughed and replied that of course it was not for nothing that he had lived in the mountains for twenty years. Chelsea thought at that moment, Are these really the same bandits? The blonde guy said that was right, but he didn't understand why the hell they had to work at night. The other one said that it was so that they wouldn't be attacked, and that they should get the flower and get out of the place as soon as possible. Chelsea peeked out from behind a tree to look at them. She didn't understand what they were saying about Barack. Had they really come for her too? Then the man suggested maybe a rope to try. The other replied that he should not think, but simply act. At that moment, he threw the rope and caught it on a rock. Chelsea, who was watching, thought, Are they really just going to take the flower now? It's her plant. She found it first. Chelsea thought it was all unfair, but didn't know what she should do. She thought, Maybe just run out and ask for at least one stalk? But she realized that these people were too suspicious, and that would be dangerous. 
After a while, the blonde-haired man's partner had already taken the flower and put it in a bag. When he came down, he said he needed to look around. The other one was indignant and asked why he wanted to go home already. But the guy said if there's one Baraka in this place, there might be more nearby, so have him stop whining and just follow him. The blonde-haired guy said he just hates his job. When they left, Chelsea exhaled. But she still didn't understand why they were doing this. After that, she looked at the rock and realized that there wasn't even a single flower left. But then, suddenly she looked more closely, and between the rocks she saw it. There was only one Baraka left after all. Chelsea was very happy when she saw that. She walked up to the cliff. Chelsea didn't know if that was a good thing or the opposite, but they had left a rope so she could climb up it. The girl thought it must be okay. When she looked up, she thought she looked kind of high, but then realized it wasn't a good time to panic. Carmen suffers as she stands there hesitating. The girl thought she needed to climb up, then started climbing up the rock on the rope. Chelsea figured it wasn't as hard as she thought, and with the rope she could easily reach Baraka. But suddenly, as she took the next step, she accidentally stumbled and started to fall off the cliff. At the last moment, Chelsea tried to grab the rope. The girl managed to do so and immediately climbed up one of the rocks, thinking she had almost fallen. When she looked down, she realized that she had done it herself, climbing the mountain. It was scary, of course, but she succeeded in the end. When she looked at her hands, she felt pain and realized that her hands were all bruised now, but then decided that she didn't need to be distracted because there were more important things to do than scratch. She walked over to the flower and plucked it. After that, she thought that the strange shape of the bud and the unpleasant odor, now it was definitely Baraka, and she was not wrong. And a short time later, Chelsea was back in town. She went into a restaurant and asked if Kucher was here. The man who had been drinking looked at the girl and remembered that she was the one who was traveling with him, said that was right, and could he please take her back to the capital. The man was surprised and asked if it was right now, because it was so late outside. The man was surprised and asked if it was right now, because it was so late outside. But suddenly she looked in her pouch where the money was kept. She was very surprised when she didn't see it there, because she had a lot of it. The coachman looked at her distraught face and said that was the way they were going. So there was no need for money. Chelsea started to protest. She said that was wrong. Then asked what about her necklace. She could give it to her as payment. After that, Chelsea took off her necklace. When coachman picked it up, he thanked the girl and said his daughter would love it. After that, he stood up and said that if they went right now, such a pipe would be already in the capital. Apparently, she had some urgent business there. Chelsea replied that yes, it was very urgent, and thanked him. And so they raced until morning and finally arrived at the palace, when the sun had already risen. She entered the manor, and immediately handed the servants each a raku. After that, she left the place. She wished she could see Carmen, but she was afraid she would not be allowed to see him. As she left the imperial palace, Chelsea heard the joyful voice of her majesty, who recognized that a flower had been found. When she got home, the girl went straight to bed. She thought that it had been very difficult, but in the end she had managed it and she had done a great job. Chelsea really wanted to meet Carmen as soon as possible. And just like that, a few days passed from that day. Their relationship with Carmen only grew stronger. And just like that, Chelsea reached school age and entered the academy. The parents were concerned. Her mother asked her daughter if it was too early for her to go to the academy. It could be a year later. The girl replied that of course not. After all, then she would be with Carmen in different classes. But the girl told her mother that she could not worry about her there. She would manage. After that, she said goodbye to her parents and told them she would be on her way because it was time. The Hevram Imperial Academy is the Empire's top training center with three buildings. There's a general corps where everyone can enroll, a military corps where knights are trained, and a magic corps. Chelsea, on the other hand, has applied to join the General Corps. As she found the Academy, she studied the list. She didn't understand exactly if it was a schedule, for there were some holidays, like the Entrance Banquet, the Spring Festival, and the Masquerade. A girl came up to her and told her that this was the way it was supposed to be. They had just joined and would be in their first year of training, neither knights nor mages. Chelsea, when she looked at the girl, realized it was Elena Brown a friend from childhood. As she grew up, her hair color darkened. 
Elena said it was more of a general development core with a focus on bonding. Chelsea thought that sounded silly, but she was right. Unlike those with a narrow specialty, education for the general class is not as important as new acquaintances. As the girls sat on the bench, Chelsea said that she missed Carmen and asked if they could climb over the fence of the military building. Elena replied that they would be punished for that. But Chelsea said they're in the same academy. Why was it such a problem to see each other? The girl answered that she should have gone to the same building with him. Then it would have been easier. At that moment, two more men approached the girls. The redhead asked, They are Lady Lordlin and Lady Brown, aren't they? After that, she said that her name was Suzanne and the girl next to her was Lena. Chelsea replied that it was her. She then asked, What is it? Why did they come? Suzanne took Chelsea's hand and asked if they wanted to join their needlework club. She said that the club's activities are related to embroidery. Lena complimented that if they haven't decided on an extracurricular activity yet, why not join them? Chelsea replied that she wasn't really interested, but she said it would help them in the upcoming contest. The girl asked what the contest was about. Chelsea again said there will be several contests during the festival. The military corps will put on a jousting contest, and from the general corps, somewhere around five competitions, including survival, knitting, and poetry, will be considered the queen of the academy. Lena said she heard that Chelsea has a queen lover. When Lena saw the puzzled face, she said that apparently she didn't know what that meant. She said the star couple are the winners of the festival's competition, recognized as the best in their field. There is a belief that they are bound by fate and after graduating from the academy will definitely get married. All the star couples are featured in this magazine. She said that the girls could see that many of them were really married and showed them the magazine. Chelsea was very attracted to the word married. She thought, isn't that the perfect future for her? A happy family with Prince Charming. If she and Carmen are chosen to be king and queen in the pageant, the girl thought she was so intrigued. So she said she wanted to join their club. Chelsea joined their club after all, and in the evenings when she came home from the academy, she embroidered. One day her sister came into her room and asked her why she was still awake. Her sister came closer, sat on the bed with her and asked her what she was doing. Is she still embroidering? She told Chelsea that she should go to bed early since she had a pageant tomorrow. But the girl said she couldn't sleep even if she wanted to. The sister said that not only the academy students but also the immediate family members would be there tomorrow. They would come and support her for sure. So she can have no worries. Learned replied that she knew that. The nurse said that she could go to rest then and wished her good night. After that she turned off the light and left. Lying in bed, she thought that the contest was just around the corner. She didn't seem to have any problems with embroidery. But there's also chess. As per the rules, Chelsea decides she'll just improvise and not waste any time. She hopes she doesn't have any problems tomorrow. Chelsea was serious and thought that really everything was going to be okay. She was anxious for tomorrow to come soon. And just like that, the night passed quickly and the day of the festival came. There were a lot of people. Someone from the presenters told the tournament participants to go to the right wing and that all instruments had been checked by the students of the Magic Corps. Chelsea, when she arrived at the party, told Elena that there were so many people she didn't even expect it. But Elena, encouraging her friend, replied that she could do it. She had practiced so much for a reason. Chelsea was confident and said she was sure her embroidery was just perfect. But at that moment, the girls heard whispering. Their classmates said it's Sasha and she's beautiful. That's who's most qualified to be queen. Chelsea thought to herself, here she comes, her toughest opponent yet. And her name is Sasha Croft. The girl walked over to the others and told them to stop. The competition hadn't even started yet. But at that point, the woman said that the competition runs from 10 o'clock in the morning to 6 o'clock in the evening. They have a total of 8 hours to work with. She said the contest will start with craft. Next they have a chess tournament, and after that comes poetry. And lastly, embroidery with knitting. Participants will need to meet the deadline and turn in their work before the end of the contest. She then said that if the students were worthy of finding that Queen's Laureate, then let them try to showcase their skills to the fullest. That's how the first phase began. Crafts already. In a short time, Sasha quickly built her carousel and said that she would like to hand in her work. All the contestants were very surprised that she finished so quickly, but the judge told there to be silence in the room because the others were still working. At that moment, 
Chelsea thought that she had just started after all, and it was Sasha who had already finished. Suzanne turned to her and told her to try to glue the base right away so that it would dry as soon as possible. If it didn't dry, the work wouldn't get credit, but she shouldn't be in a hurry. There are no extra points for speed anyway. Chelsea rejoiced and thought she should probably take it easy. She wasn't going to let her training go to waste. All Chelsea has to do is glue the parts of the house together, so she can do it. After a while, long enough, Elena came up to her and asked if she was still not done with the fake. Was Chelsea giving up? Suzanne said Chelsea embroidered while the pieces dried. She was so engrossed that she didn't notice the pieces had moved a little. Helena was surprised and asked the girl what she had ended up with. Chelsea replied that she had finished the cabin, of course. It just came out very crooked. Because she'd used too much glue, the pieces had started to slide around, just like that, and they'd dried. Chelsea said it was a nightmare, and showed Elena her house. Well, that, replied the girl, not to get upset, for there were still a few more competitions ahead. Not all was lost yet. She said that there would still be embroidery after all, so don't let Chelsea get too upset. Elena asked if she was sure she'd win, right? Chelsea smiled happily, looked at her friend and said that, yes, she had been practicing hard all this time, so she was confident in her abilities. Afterward, they went to lunch. Chelsea said it was not the time to be discouraged. She had to get ready for the next competition, but Elena told her to eat a little slower because she would choke. And just like that, the second stage, chess, had already begun. Chelsea sat down against her opponent, and the man said the game was starting. Chelsea thought she needed to think and knit at the same time. Suddenly, her rival turned to her and asked if she aspired to be queen of the academy. But without waiting for an answer, Chelsea said she'd better give up right away, because the victory would definitely belong to Sasha. Let her take no offense, but Sasha has been outstanding since she was born. Chelsea figured she didn't have time to talk, and she needed to knit, but the girl kept talking. She said that time was running out, and apparently Chelsea wouldn't make it. She understood, but she didn't want to win. Suddenly, she said it was about knitting. She asked Chelsea if she thought she'd made a mistake and pointed to her piece. Chelsea was very frightened. She quickly started to look at what she had tied up and saw, indeed, there was a hole there. She was very upset. The girl didn't understand how she could have made a mistake and thought that she needed to be more careful. Chelsea realized that she just needed to calm down. There was still plenty of time before the paper was due, so she'd have time to fix the mistake. But then suddenly her opponent said, checkmate. She added that unfortunately, Chelsea lost. The girl did not understand how it happened, and her rival thanked her for the game and said that maybe she would be luckier in the next stage. The rest of the competition ended without incident. When it was over, Lena came up to her and congratulated her, saying that she had done a great job. Chelsea thanked her and said it was all because of her. Suzanne said that even though the embroidery was a bit clumsy in the beginning, they still managed to get it right in the end. Elena said she was just watching from the sidelines, but she was so nervous. She said it was a terrible shame. If Chelsea had been given more time, she would have been able to become queen of the academy. The girl said it was okay. It was a little short indeed. There was nothing she could do about it. As for the results, Chelsea took second place in embroidery. The first place in all competitions went to Sasha Croft. Not without reason she was supported by so many people. Sasha really is like a princess, learning everything from diapers. So it is not surprising that she took the first places. If Chelsea had worked the way she did from childhood, she would have had it easy too. But Chelsea didn't know if she would have become queen of the academy then. She walked out onto the balcony and thought that there was no point in regretting it. She should just try harder from now on. Chelsea thought she was going to show them all some more by raising her glass up, but then suddenly someone came up to her and asked what she was doing. Afterward, Carmen took the glass from the girl and asked what kind of wine it was. He drank its contents. When Chelsea turned around, she immediately saw Carmen in front of her, and he asked why she was standing alone. Carmen explained that the girl was nowhere to be found so he decided to go and look for her. Chelsea didn't say anything back, and then he looked at her, asking if she was okay. But Carmen didn't know what she was talking about. Chelsea said the drink he just had was cherry, and he was allergic to cherries. Carmen didn't say anything back, but Chelsea suggested that he should see if he was already having an allergic reaction, and asked if he should go get some medicine. However, the boy replied that he was fine. Chelsea remarked that his allergies could make him sick, and that he shouldn't have drank the juice. 
but the boy just laughed. Chelsea asked why he'd done it in the first place. She then took his hand and offered to see if there was a rash. However, Carmen pulled his hand away and said that there was no need to do that. He was a little embarrassed. Chelsea didn't know what he was talking about. Then he said that a prince shouldn't show his weak side. Hearing Chelsea laughing loudly, Carmen asked why she was laughing so hard. Chelsea replied that he was so cute that she couldn't stop laughing. Carmen asked if he had decided to keep her company. At that moment, Chelsea thought Carmen was so caring and considerate. It's a miracle. And at that moment, the girl pulled a box out of her pocket and said she had a present for him. Carmen took the gift in his hands and asked what it was. Chelsea replied that he had to open the box to see. The boy opened the box and saw some strange pattern inside. When he took it out, he asked what it was. Chelsea said she made up the pattern and embroidered it herself. She just wanted to make him feel good. Chelsea also said that she's only been embroidering for a month, so she wants him not to judge her harshly and asked how he liked it. Carmen took a closer look and said he liked it. Chelsea was overjoyed. She was relieved. She then added that she may not be able to do everything all at once, but she was very happy that at least she was able to do that. The girl said that she would try and treasure such moments, so it was a token thing. At that moment she put her hand on his cheek and began to move closer. Chelsea kissed him on the lips and told him it was a thing. It was a symbol of her love. Carmen didn't see that coming. He dropped the box. The girl said that she loved him very much. Carmen didn't even know what to say to that. Suddenly they heard someone talking on the balcony. More people came out and said there was someone confessing. Another girl said they looked very nice, but aren't they a little early since they're freshmen? Afterwards they apologized if they were interrupting. Just happened to see them. Awkwardly she laughed. She didn't know. Had they been eavesdropping for a long time? Had they really heard her confess to him? Then she told Carmen to go inside and dance. The girl blurted out that there was about to be a couple dance and they were so cool. The other said that she wanted to see the sequel, right? Chelsea thought as they walked. Why on earth did she only go out on that balcony? She admitted. Even answering it was really embarrassing for her. When they went back inside, the guy apologized to her and said there were intruders. But Chelsea interrupted him and said she understood and thought she'd fall through the ground right now. The girl just gathered her thoughts. Now this day would be remembered by the fact that someone heard how she had embarrassed herself, but Carmen would not care. Chelsea asked him what was true, or did it come out a little awkwardly? Next time she'd do it right. Carmen looked at her and smiled. After that, he suggested that they just forget about it and dance. The girl was surprised that he wanted to do it right now, but she had no choice, because he took her hand and began to twirl her around in a dance. Then she asked him what she wanted to dance. In his voice he said that she said she herself had offered to dance. So he thought so. Chelsea didn't understand. Did he really think she wanted this? She felt so ashamed. Then Carmen interrupted her thoughts by saying he had something to tell her. When Chelsea asked what he'd said, he said that actually, when the competition was over, a girl had confessed to him, but he wasn't interested, so he'd turned her down. He thought it would be best to tell Chelsea about it. The girl felt his hands sweating, but Carmen continued. He said that he thought there was no point in having a relationship now, so if something like that happened, he would tell her right away. Carmen said that he was her fiancé after all. Chelsea heard this and was very happy, and then said that of course if he was bored with someone, he should tell her right away. He knows how long she's enjoyed that day. The only thing he's gotten good at is embroidery. Even a declaration of love had ruined a day that would stay in her memory for a long time. Chelsea wondered if Carmen would remember this day. Three years later, sitting in lectures, Chelsea set aside her quill and sighed. Elena, who was next to her, asked what that sigh was all about. Chelsea replied that it was just because of Carmen. Again, she really missed him. Chelsea was now 18 years old. Elena didn't know what she was talking about since they'd had such a good time last time. She started to answer that it had been three years since that day, and she had seen him more often before she entered the academy. Chelsea said she doesn't know, no matter how much she tries, it feels like they're not moving anywhere. Elena said it's no reason to be bored, right? Maybe she'll just do something. Chelsea said Carmen said Carmen said he wanted to be a knight and that his final exam was coming up and he needed to study. He doesn't even have time to write a letter. The girl said that these exams last a very long time. She wondered if he was resting at least a little. Elena told her friend that they would also have exams soon. 
Chelsea says she wants at least one opportunity to get closer to him. I mean, she's a little bit in the question for just that. Suddenly, someone sitting next to her told her to leave him alone already. Chelsea was very angry when she heard this and asked what he had said. It was Mars Glam, who was also 18 years old. He said Carmen was a prince after all. His brother agreed with him, his name was Chris Glam, and said right, he's a very busy man. He has the fate of the Empire on his shoulders, so he works hard. He hardly rests at all. Let her give Carmen a break from her. Mars told her to find something to do in the world, because there are so many things to do. It would make her heart feel better. Chelsea wondered if he meant it. His brother chimed in and said that she was probably tired of going down on him herself after all. So let her get used to the future. It would still be hard. But Elena told her not to listen to them. Chelsea then asked one of her brothers, let him tell her honestly, he thinks so too, that she needs another activity because Carmen is tired of her. Mars said sure, and if she wanted Carmen's attention so badly, she could take him on a date near the academy. There's a wonderful bakery that opened up there. Chelsea said no, their buns aren't good, and they might contain nuts, and he's allergic to nuts.